So I'm just going to walk and talk through the concept with you. So today we're here to prove the concept that regardless of the, the color of the vehicle, um, with enough preparation and uh, dedication, we have the ability to camouflage really in any scenario, but specifically here uh, in the uh, forests of Western Poland. So in all honesty, it takes the crew approximately two hours to camouflage to the standard that we have here. So we have our basic camo net 
um, that we have uh, slightly modified to break up the signature, um, both of the hardened portions of the turret and the hull itself. Um, also, uh, reducing our, uh, our thermal signature. So that's step one. Step two is going to be to gather uh, foliage, uh, generally surrounding the same area in which you're going to occupy a tactical assembly area, an attack position, or an assault position. Um, you use that foliage to continue to uh, modify the edges um, and help the vehicle itself blend in. Um, as you are adding foliage, you need to ensure that all your systems still work. So your ITAS, your, your, your primary gun system, your commander's independent viewer, uh, ensure that the driver is able to drive, and then you just do certain spot checks to ensure, once again, that the net itself or the foliage is not impeding the movement of the turret or the actual movement of the Bradley itself. So um, what we're currently in is an assault position, which would be our last covered and concealed position before we move to an objective. Um, here, we would uh, conduct priorities of work, finalize our plan, um, and then deploy onward you know, to an assault, a defense, or whatever it may be. It's really that last covered and concealed position uh, where we could prep um, for our final execution on the objective. One reason why we did a lot of the, the preparation in the motor pool, or really in the tactical Alpha Alpha, um, prior to coming out here, is um, throughout our maneuver, um, we're, we're going to have to occupy several assembly areas, or assault positions, or, or, or attack positions, in route to our objective. We need to have the ability to quickly um, move into a wooded area and, uh, and not be able to be observed by any potential enemy. Um, so it was important that within approximately 15 minutes, this Bradley was able to go from maneuvering in a, uh, a, a large open area um, directly into the wood line and blend in with the, the local surroundings. And once again, uh, I can't emphasize enough the, the ability to maintain uh, the, the functions of the weapon system and the vehicle itself. Okay, so, so the, the easiest thing to do in, in camouflaging our vehicles in, in this specific scenario is the, the uh, amount of foliage that, that surrounds the area, specifically deadfall, and in the winter it's also made it a little easier. Um, so you're able to collect up that, that deadfall, the branches that uh, allow you just to look, you know, much like a bush or a tree um, that, that, that's in the woods. When, when you're camouflaging in, uh, let's just call it the National Training Center in the desert, Usually you have to look for berms or a draw, a little bit of dead space. Um, and one thing that, that you could come into uh, issues with when you're doing that is line of sight communication. So one thing that we're able to do significantly better is hide within the wood line and still maintain that ability to communicate um, uh, as, as we're hidden. So field craft is a, is a priority um, really in anything from a dismounted squad being able to blend in to its surroundings to a Bradley fighting vehicle. Um, so we will emphasize uh, field craft, camouflage, and the ability to blend into you, uh, your immediate surroundings in every training exercise. So this is really just a proof of concept and uh, the initial um, training to ensure that we have the ability to do it. From here on out, we're gonna continue to better uh, the, our ability to, to do exactly that. You know, just having uh, conducted the National Training Center rotation, we were forced to blend in uh, due to the OP4 uh, and, and the enemy uh, situation template that was going on um, with, uh, or, or the scenario that was presented at the National Training Center. So just now, three months ago, we had to do the same thing in the desert with these vehicles, and we did it phenomenally. Uh, we had the ability to execute hide sites, Alpha Alpha um, operations, assault positions and remain undetected from the enemy. To be able to do the same thing in a completely different environment really shows the proficiency of the crew themselves to camouflage uh, their Bradley fighting vehicle or uh, tank um, for that matter. So we've got this as a perfect example right here. We're using this large chunk of tree. It's not actually necessarily covering the Bradley, but it's breaking this line and leading away to, to uh, dissipate that signature of the, the vehicle. We've got uh, brush along the side. You can see we're using the natural terrain as well. 
So we're running this brush down once again just to change that signature instead of having a blocky vehicle coming up the top, you've got some, some lines to lead your eye away from the lines of the vehicle. You can see a little better here how we're using this natural foliage to uh, break up the line of that antenna and just cover the, the color of the vehicle and create a, less of a signature like you were looking at this vehicle. You can see my commander's sight up here is fully operational right now, as well as the gun, both the uh, 25 millimeter and my coax are both fully functional with a camouflage on it. So our initial steps in our camouflage process involved our camouflage net right here. This is a typical radar scattering and uh, laser scattering net. We just cover the vehicle as best we could, once again using chunks of it to break up the outline, create a visual difference in it. Once we had our camo nets on, we moved out here, we actually collected a lot of natural foliage. Nothing you see here was cut down, this is all deadfalls and uh, material that was already on the forest floor. So. Back in our, uh, our Tactical Alpha Alpha, we started going ahead and applying a lot of the brush you see on the sides and on the turret, and then bringing some extra stuff that we had just kind of stacked on top for the movement out here. Once we got into place was when we really kind of finished the small details on it. So coming in, laying this brush down, coming off the sides, adding in, we actually added snow to mimic the natural environment. So we gathered snow from back behind our fighting position and actually added that in after we were in place here. And then our final step was just to move out away from the vehicle and kind of get an idea of what was popping out in the wood line. Uh, one of the things it's real easy to see is like our headlights have a very distinct round signature to them. So we made sure we got those covered after we were in place just so they wouldn't stand out to the eye.